I think it popped up here anyway when it was finished. Yeah, De Debian 10.1, so that's fine. Yeah, in fact, I'll just type reboot here. Right, so this is the Debian 10 booted. As you can see, it looks a little bit different, the graphics. So we're going to go for graphical install. Video to sync. Okay. So to install this, what we're going to do is select the language first. So I want English. Country, United Kingdom, British English keyboard, And by the way, I've got the network unplugged at the moment. So this is purely um, an offline installation now. So the host name I'm going to give this machine, so I'll call it Debian 10, for example. And domain, I've got a domain, so I'll type that in. Uh, if you haven't, you can, I believe, leave that blank. Oh, you can make something up, it says, but make sure you use the same domain domain on all your computers so you can see it skip past the network configuration there I'm going to type a root password in and a username username for the account and a password For that account. So it's trying to set up the clock, but obviously there's going to be no network connection. Okay, so what we want to do here is manual because we don't want to overwrite or delete the partition with the disk images on. So I'll do continue there. You can see here is the hard disk. If you remember, the first partition was the partition with the disk images. So um, I want to click on this. In fact, I want to double click on it. And this was the, oh, I think this was the boot partition, wasn't it? Yes, 260 megabytes. So I want to change this and format it as, for example, an X2. Mount point, it's going to be the boot partition. Uh, label, I can call it the boot, and can raise the data on the partition as well. So yes, I do because we want to put the Debian 10 on there, and we 
we've done setting that one up. Then I want to go to the third partition and likewise I want to format to an ext4. I want to format mount points will be the root file system label, I may as well call it root. And I can actually erase the data here. Just to ensure that it is blank. All right, it looks like it's doing the whole of the partition, so I don't really want that. I'm not sure if I can cancel that. Yes, I can, luckily. So I don't really want to erase it, especially as this is an SSD. Um, just formatting it would be enough. I'll just double check that this is going to be. Yeah, use as. Yeah, that's fine. And finally, I just want to make sure that this gets mounted. Um, it looks like I can't actually set it. If I do anything here, it will format it. So I don't want to do that. So I'll go back. Um, one thing I haven't done, I just realized I haven't put a swap partition, but there's, well, it's, it's personal choice, but swap partition. I know that I wouldn't need it for the use that I've got for this. So, um, it's, it's not necessary in my situation, but obviously if you feel like you need swap, then don't forget to add that in as well. So I won't save anything there. So that's it really. I'm going to have to do modify the FS tab when the system's installed to add in the um, DVD partitions as before. Um, but apart from that, that should be all that's needed. Finish partitioning, right changes to the disk. Uh, you've not, oh, it's actually warned me that I haven't selected in the swap, oh, swap space. So uh, no, I don't want to, because I'm happy that there isn't any. And then it's telling me here that it's going to format second and third partition, which is good. That's what I want. Do you want to write to these disks? Yes. Just as long as it's not writing to the first partition. Um, don't really care about anything else. Okay, so now it's asking me about a network mirror, but obviously um, updates can take responsibility for so, and also it's not going to be connected to the network, so there's no point in doing this. So I'll keep it as no, don't want to use a network mirror.
Okay, popularity contest. Uh, I never used to do this. I thought, well, it's a good idea to do it because you might be helping to the stats to um, help decide which packages should go on the first CD or DVD, which can be useful. So I do participate in this now. Even though we're not connected to the network, um, if you are, or you can install Debian in the future, then it might be worth doing. So options here, um, you, well, unless you know you want a uh, command line environment, you, you definitely want to leave that ticked. Pick a desktop interface, desktop, desktop environment. I use KDE, so I'll accept that. I don't need a print server, and an SSH server can be useful to um, connect to the machine remotely. And standard system utilities are, are worth having as well. So that's probably the minimum you want is those options or maybe not KDE. You know, if you like GNOME, then check that instead. But the other three are probably ones that are beneficial to most people. So click continue. And now just wait for the software to be um, retrieved off the USB by the looks of it and installed. Okay, so the file installation is finished. It's asking about installing Grub Loader. Well, yeah, I do want to install a new one because I want it to be all Debian 10. So install the Grub bootloads into the master boot record. Yes, I do. And continue. You need to make newly installed system bootable by installing Grub bootloader onto a bootable device. The usual way to do this is to install Grub on the master boot record of your first drive. If you prefer, you can install Grub elsewhere on the drive or to another drive room on floppy. So I want it to install onto the hard disk, which is that one. Continue. And that's it. So it says make sure to remove the installation from media. Uh, so that you can boot into your new system rather than restart the installation. So I'll remove it now, click continue, and wait for the machine to reboot. <laughs> 